A blessed morning to everyone. Let us sing Sanctuary. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. I sing your praise and give thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I call, you answer me. You increase my strength of soul. Though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the naughty he perceives from afar away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you reserve me against the wrath of enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill His purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do, Do not forsake, forsake the, the work of, of your hands. hands. Let us sing for the hymn of praise, grace greater than our sin. God, we thank you, Father, for this wonderful morning that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord God, for the strength and this life, Lord God, na may kasiglahan. Tunay na kami po ay nagpupurit, nagpapasalamat sa opportunity, Father God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we welcome you, Lord God. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. 
We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in the midst of us. Patuloy po kayong mangusap, patuloy po kayong kumilos sa aming kalagitnaan. Patuloy mo pong pagpalain at gamitin mightily, Father, ang iyong mga anak na narito sa harapan. Higit sa lahat, Panginoon, ang iyong anak na siyang magbibigay na mensahe ng buhay. Panginoon, sa iyo po namin iniaalay ang aming pagsambang ito. Ito po ang aming panalangin sa aming Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Knox United Methodist Church. And welcome to our 9 o'clock worship service. What a wonderful time to be together today. Amen. And I do hope that you are all excited because today is a celebration of God's redeeming love for us by sending His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to redeem us from our sins. And of course, this is the first Sunday of the month and the first Sunday of the conference year. Kaya mga kapatid, tayo po ay nagdiriwang ngayon ng ating eh, tinatawag nating celebration of the Last Supper and Passover which I'm going to explain to you later on. And as we welcome each one of you, those who are watching right now through their, to their television, to their uh, computer, cell phone, uh, what have you, may the good Lord shower each one of us with His uh, enormous blessing. Kaya po ngayong umaga, mga kapatid, nais po namin na kayo ay anyayahan. Now, if you have an opportunity to send the link to your friends, to your loved ones, to those who are close to you. Please do that now. Tingin ko ito ay Knox United Methodist Church Facebook account or Facebook page. Now share that to your, um, to your loved ones, relatives, and to those who are close to you, your friends out there in, in various places of the world so that you can become part of our celebration today. Mga kapatid, Pandemia po ngayon, kaya magtitiis tayo sa ating kalagayan. But of course, we have people here inside the sanctuary. And I would like to recognize them. Of course, my family is with me. And we have two brothers here who uh, by chance uh, passed around the place and uh, they decided to worship with us. Yung nga lang, medyo uh, ikaw nga ay eh, nakakapanibago dahil sa uh, talagang uh, wala pa po tayong face-to-face. While it is true that there is uh, a mandate coming from IATF that the, the mass uh, gathering for religious organization institution can be 30% to 50%, but still we have to uh, work on it as a church. And I think the council is uh, ready to, do, um, um, to, to, to thresh that out and be able to come up with the specific measures as per recommendation coming from the Ministerial College. So again, we are so happy to have you, those who are watching out there. Thank you so much for being, being with us. Ngayon, mga kapatid, as I begin, maaaring nagtatanong kayo, bakit nag-iba yung nakatayo dyan? Dati may buhok. Ngayon, wala. Sa bagay, may buhok ako sa gilid, pero sa ibaba, wala. Kaya... Napakaliwanag mga kapatid. I do hope that uh, I've been seeing uh, through your screen uh, very, uh, uh, very brightly and uh, 
maputi po ako dyan. Tama po yun. Y- yun naman po yung nagsasabi ng totoo. Ano po? And uh, nais kong ipagbigay alam sa inyo mga kapatid. Kasi gusto ko sana lumakad dito, hindi man ako makuha noong kwan. Okay, so can, can we move here? And then the, uh, okay, yan. Yan, mas gusto ko dito eh. Okay, para I, I can communicate with the people out there. Yan, praise be to God. You know, church, I'm so happy to be back. Okay, let me say that, to be back, yes. Because in 19, uh, 2004, not in 19, ako, hindi naman ako ganang katanda. In 2004, I was here in this church. So I would not say that it's my first time. I would say I returned back. But during that time, I was an associate pastor handling the Aldous Gate worship service or the contemporary form of service. Pero ngayon po, ako'y bumabalik sa... Cent- uh, I'm sorry, ang dami ko kasi yung kwan. Ano? Kumisan, San Mayor na sasabi ko, kumisan Central Church. Ah, oh, forgive me. Nandito na pala ako sa Nax. <laughs> All right. Mga kapatid, uh, this time, I, I returned to this church, mga kapatid. So I'm not new here. I'm not new here. Kilala ko ang mga miyembro dito. I know them fully well. So I think yung uh, ating honeymoon stage, eh, medyo kakalimutan natin yun dahil magkakakilala na tayo except for those new people who are with this church, which uh, I think uh, um, I'm not familiar with. But of course, I'm so happy to see uh, everybody, mga kapatid, na nahanjan kayo, yung mga miyembro natin na, na, na mga taganaps, ano po, ako'y natutuwa na nahanjan kayo. And of course, I've seen, the, you know, uh, ano ba ito, old faces or mga dati nahan dito noon. Si Francis nakita ko eh. And I'm so happy that uh, he's around. Yes, at saka yung mga kapatid natin uh, na napadaan and they are with us. Mga kapatid, ako po ay si Pastor Menry Mindilio. Ano po? At uh, ako po ay pastor na ng iglesia for uh, more than uh, I think uh, 37 years in the ministry. At uh, nanggaling na po ko sa iba't ibang mga iglesia mga kapatid and before coming to uh, this church I was the admin pastor of San Mayor and uh, prior to San Mayor I was the admin pastor of Central United Methodist Church but there is so much joy returning back to this church. Ngayon, mga kapatid, gusto kong i-introduce sa inyo dahil nakita na ninyo. Pero nung nahandito ako, I think uh, Mrs. Mindilio, makapal pa ang aking taluktok. Ano? Makapal pa ang aking buhok dito. Kulot pa ako noon. Kung matandaan, ni, kung matandaan niya ni Kuya Dave, uh, Sansano, <laughs> nila Brother Jun, sila Ate Liz, ano? sila... Um, at at Perla at saka si Nino Jun ano <laughs> makapal pa noon eh anyway nandito sila and uh, during the time that I was here eto pong dalawang anak ko na ito maliliit pa ang liliit po niyan kaya sila hindi nila matandaan ang pagkadistino namin dito ngayon i-introduce ko sila sa inyo mga kapatid so that uh, uh, you would know that uh, they are part of the family of the pastor Dati noon, binata pa yung aking pang- dalawang anak na nauna. Nag-asawa na silang pareho, but yung isa nasa Santiago City, nakapangasawa po ng isang obigaini. At ngayon, kasama ko yung pangalawa at kanyang asawa, uh, si Jen Jen at si EJ. Okay, sige, pumunta nga kayo dito sa may harapan para makita kayo. Please join me here. Hindi, uh, sige, alin na kayo, buong na kayo. Sige, tapos isa-isa ko kayo ituturo. Tapos magsasalita kayo, no? Yan. Social distancing pa rin, ha? O, o dyan na lang kayo. O. Okay. Social distancing. Sukatin nga nyo kung may, may one beater sila. Okay. O. Yan. Sige. Ito po ang aking may bahay, si Mrs. Mindilio. Ano po? Yan. Ito, si Mrs. Mindilio. Yan po ang aking may bahay, mga kapatid. Uh, kilala naman niyo si Mrs. Mindilio. Okay. Pero nung nandito kasi kami, maliliit pa yung mga bata. Okay. Si Jen Jen, yun yung aming uh, pangalawa. pangalawa. Napangasawa niya si EJ, anak po ng Jaco Nisa. Yan, kaway-kaway tayo dyan. Yan. At ang pangatlo ko, after 13 years kami po naghintay, 
Pinang, uh, binigyan kami ng Panginoon ng uh, isang lalaki. Uli. Uli. Ito si Carlo. Yung aming, uh, anong tawag namin dito si Gadget Man? <laughs> Dahil uh, magaling ito sa kan eh. Tec- technicality. Tsaka si, uh, si Jen Jen. So, yan po. Uh, si, yan. si Jen Jen ay tapos na. Nagtatrabaho. Itong si Carlo ay estudyante ng dentistry. At yung pinakabunso namin, ang, kasi nagpray ako ng babae, ibinigay ng Diyos. Ito na po yung nasa central. Ah, nasa, ah, bakit ba ako nakukuan? I'm sorry. Tatawad muna po. Ano, intindihin niyo muna ako ngayon. <laughs> si Kayla. Okay, Beatrice. Yan, kaway si Kayla. Yan, nagpiprimed po ngayon sa PLM. Yan, mga kapatid. And then, meron kaming kasama sa bahay na siya na po ay part ng pamilya namin. Tinuturing namin uh, anak na rin ito eh. Na dalaga pa po ito. Kaya, yan. Kung meron pong... <laughs> yan, si Maricel. Makikita ninyo siya. At uh, she's already part of our family, mga kapatid. At nandito na rin siya. Noong nagumpi siya po sa amin, 15 years ago, she's already here with us, here at Nax, mga kapatid. So, mga kapatid, Salamat po sa pag-welcome ninyo. Salamat po sa mainit na inyong pagtanggap. Ha? Uh, at salamat din sa pag-welcome namin sa aming mga sarili. <laughs> Dahil kami ay masayang nakabalik dito sa NAX. Salamat po mga kapatid. At uh, sana ang dalangin ko magkatulong tayo for um, the advancement of the work of God through His Church using the lay people of the church and those of you are praying for for us. God bless us all. Salamat po sa aking pamilya. Yan. Palakpakan niyo sarili ninyo. <laughs> Direct Francis, ala tayong clapper, ano? <laughs> okay. Ngayon. Mga kapatid, yung uh, mga announcements, na announce na kanina, eh, di ba? Meron ba ko i-announce? Ha? Yung pa rin. Oh, sige, paki-flash natin sa screen para mabasa ni Pastor Mendre yung mga nahan doon. And I, I hope I would be able to uh, read it correctly and be able to justify all the things that I'm going to say. Mga ah, kapatid, uh, birthdays. Naku, marami yung mga birthdays. Umpisahan natin ang birthdays. Ah, hindi ba banggitin lahat? Oh, basahin na lang ninyo. Okay. I-flash na lang ninyo diyan and then Uh, I will just simply say happy birthday. Ah, ito, ito. I'm sorry. I, I should be guided here. Please forgive me. Uh, I would be uh, in a very awkward uh, situation now because I, I do not do the sequence. Okay, kasi ala kong kwan eh. Ala kong, ano tawag dito? Monitoring uh, kwan para na, na, nasasabihin ako ni direct. Anyway, sige. Schedule ng services. 7 o'clock, ay hindi, dawn prayer, right? We have a dawn prayer at 5 o'clock every Sunday. Don't forget it, mga kapatid. This coming Sunday, I will be the one who will preach in the dawn prayer. So please, be with us. Be with us. This is very important. If you believe in the power of prayer and prayer is power, be with us. Now, the only problem is for you to wake up early. But if you will try to do that, and become your habit every Sunday, then I will tell you, it will make a difference into your lives. So please do that, church. Be with us during that prayer time. And then at 7 o'clock, I Ilocano. Tama ba yan? Ilocano. Oh, gagayem kakabsat. Ada panagdaydayaw tayo. Tagalog na lang. <laughs> Nang 7 o'clock. Ano po? Please don't miss that service. Pastor Marcel is the one in charge of that, right? And then at 9 o'clock, of course, our Tagalog English worship service. And uh, we would like to invite you uh, to join us. And on, uh, oh, what is that? Uh, 3 o'clock, contemporary. Okay, contemporary worship service. And uh, this, will be, uh, uh, this will be led by... Uh, our pastor uh, Jericho Ong. Okay, so please be with, the, uh, with, with them this afternoon. All right? And then we have a midweek service every Thursday. 
at 6.30 in the afternoon. So please, in the evening, I should say. So please be there and join us. And the umagang kay ganda si kasama si Jesus. Ah, si Jesus ang kasama. Mga kapatid, <laughs> I have a lot of blunders here, direct. Pasensya muna, direct. Okay. <laughs> mga kapatid, panoorin niyo po niyo dyan, yung tuloy-tuloy po yan, mga kapatid. No changes at this time. We will just uh, um, go along with it. And then the, the multimedia team will meet and try to figure out what would be the next uh, uh, direction of this program, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. So please join um, the uh, morning devotion. Uh, we do hope that you are always uh, with that particular program. Okay, ngayon, meron din, ano, yung Ilocano na imbag adamag. Panagdayaw ken pana... Panag... What's that? Panagkararag. Okay, panagkararag. Okay, kasi medyo parang nalabo yung tingin ko doon sa kwan eh. Okay, panagdayaw ken panagkararag. Yan, yan po ay sa pangunguna ng kanilang pastor, Ilocano pastor, no other than Reverend Dr. Marcel Tangilan. Yan. Siguro later on, we will plan that we, uh, I, I will have also a special uh, program, uh, special program so that, uh, you know, I'm thinking of the direct, I'm thinking of an international service. That's, I'm praying now, an international service that they will, we're going to cater our service at next year all over the world. So our audience will be all over the world. Ano po? So I'm praying for that. Okay, so praise be to God. Oh, yun, ano nang susunod, uh, Irene? Ikaw na. Tapos na yung announcement ko. Okay, so mga kapatid, pagpasensya niya na si Pastor Mendre at this point in time. Ano po, uh, I will learn uh, the uh, rudiments of it later on. So thank you so much. And I, I hope that you will experience God's work into your life. Now, I will say this before I sit down. Brothers and sisters in Christ, listen to me. God has a special and a surprise gift for you today. And I want you to believe. I want you to believe. And I'm saying this again. God is going to do something beautiful into your life today. And I want you to be expectant of that. Because I know it. God is speaking powerfully right now to each one of you. And before I sit down, I would like to pray for all the people out there. Those who are taking care of our online program those who are in charge of our computers, the cameras, and all our sound system in this church. Lord God, bless them. Lord God, make use of them. I pray for your consecration upon these people. I pray, Father God, that you will be there because I know that you're using this format, Lord, so that we would be able to reach out our members in their homes and to reach out people all over the world. Lord, bless our service now. Bless our service. Allow your Holy Spirit to come and empower each one of us right now. Send your angels, O God, and talk to the people in their homes and elsewhere. And allow, O God, your power to manifest and show your power of healing. You show, Father God, the power of your message today. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen and Amen. Thank you.
sa ating pagbasa ng kasulatan. Ito po'y babasahin ko sa Tagalog mula po sa Lumang Tipan. Uh, unang Samuel, Kabanatang 8, Talatang 4 hanggang 20. Ganito po ang sinasabi. Dahil dito, ang matatanda ng Israel ay nagsadya kay Samuel sa Rama at kanilang sinabi, Matanda na kayo, ang mga anak naman ninyo ay ayaw sumunod sa inyong mga bakas. Ang mabuti ipili ninyo kami ng isang haring mamamahala sa amin tulad ng ibang bansa. Nalungkot si Samuel dahil sa kahilingan ng mga tao, kaya dumalangin siya kay Yahweh. Sinabi naman sa kanya ni Yahweh, sundin mong lahat ang sinasabi nila sapagkat hindi ikaw, kundi ako ang inaayawan nilang mamahala sa kanila. Ang ginagawa nila sa iyo ngayon ay ginagawa nila sa akin. Buhat pa nang ilabas ko sila sa Ehipto, noon pa'y tumalikod na sila sa akin at naglingkod sa mga Diyos-Diyosan. Kaya sundin mo sila, ipagpauna mo lang sa kanila kung ano ang gagawin ng hari na ibig nilang mamahala sa kanila. Lahat ng sinabi ni Yahweh kay Samuel ay sinabi nito sa mga Israelita. Ito ang sabi niya, Ganito ang gagawin sa inyo ng magiging hari ninyo. Kukunin niya ang mga anak ninyong lalaki upang gawing kawal. Ang iba'y sakay ng karwaheng pandigma, ang iba'y mga ngabayo at ang iba na may lakad na mangunguna sa paglalak- pagsalakay. Ang iba'y gagawin niyang pinuno para sa libo-libo at sa lima-limampu. Ang iba'y itatalaga niya sa kanyang bukirin at sa gawaan ng mga kagamitan at karuahing pangdigma. Ang iyong mga anak na babae naman ay gagawin niyang manggagawa ng pabango, tagapagluto at tagagawa ng tinapay. Kukunin din niya ang pinakamagaganda ninyong bukirin, ubasan, taniman ng olibo at paalagaan sa kanyang mga tauhan. Kukunin din niya ang ikasampung bahagi ng inyong ani sa bukid at ubasan para ibigay sa kanyang mga pinuno at mga katulong sa palasyo. Kukunin niya pati ang inyong mga alila, babae at lalaki, ang pinakamagaganda ninyong baka, kabayo at asno. Kukunin din ang ikasampung bahagi ng inyong kawan at kayo'y gagawin niyang alipin. Pagdating ng araw na yaon, idada. Idadain ninyo kay Yahweh ang inyong hari na kayo na rin ang pumili, ngunit hindi niya kayo pakikinggan. Hindi rin pinansin na mga Israelita ang sinabi ni Samuel. Sa halip, sinabi nila, kahit ano ang gawin sa amin ay ibig pa rin naming hari ang mamahala sa amin. Sa gayon, matutulad kami sa ibang bansa. Sa pamamahala kami ng isang haring, magtatanggol sa amin laban sa mga kaaway. The reading of the New Testament from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 13 up to 5, chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us. And will present us with with you. <clears throat> for all things are for your sakes that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if we our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have built, we have a building from God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven.
we're supposed to stand as we read the gospel. The gospel reading is found in the gospel of Mark chapter 3, beginning from verse 20, ending on verse 35. Now, if you have a Bible with you in your home and here in the sanctuary, please join me in reading this particular passage and story. Then Jesus entered the house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, then the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided, Against itself, the house cannot stand, and if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of man will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying, He has an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the very word of God for the people of God. Everybody say, Amen.
Thank you so much. Virtual Choir of Knox United Methodist Church. Wow. Those are familiar faces to me and uh, to Carol, my wife. We are so excited to meet you face to face, but not yet. Because we are being restricted by uh, our situation today. It's pandemic, so we'll just be blessed with those uh, uh, rendition uh, using the virtual uh, format. And thank you so much, uh, Virtual Choir, for that beautiful and, and very uplifting uh, message of song. Grace, grace. Wow. Indeed, my soul is refreshed with uh, so much love for the Lord God. Wow. Pwede na yan itong altar call na ngayon, ano? At background na natin yung uh, uh, Virtual Choir. But not yet. You have to listen to me first. Of course, before I proceed with the message, which is a lectionary lesson today, I would like to express uh, um, our deepest condolences to the family of Bishop Daniel Arichia Jr. We uh, condole with their mommy Ruth, uh, their children who are in U.S., and even uh, the loved ones of uh, Bishop Arichea, who passed away last June 1. The Misha College went to Central Church last night to uh, pay our last tribute to him and handed over our uh, love gift for uh, the Aricheas. And thank you so much for the church in providing our financial assistance to Bishop Aretzea. I will tell you this, brothers and sisters in Christ, that they have been card a huge amount of, uh, of uh, money because of the hospitalization of Bishop Aretzea. And we will pray for that, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I would like to enjoin each one of you, if you have an extra money, you can even share something for Bishop Arichea. And then I failed to do this. I failed to do this just a while ago, which I should have done. It's indeed a protocol for us, especially at this first Sunday of the conference year. And what is that? Simply lamang po. Nakalimutan ko po na i-introduce sa inyo ang mga na-appoint muli. Yun. Tama ba yan? O, yung na-appoint muli dito sa uh, Knox United Methodist Church. Sana na pala pinapunta ko, yun ang mali ko, no? Pinapunta ko si Pastor Marcel, si Pastor Jericho, para ma bagaman sawa na siguro kayong nakikita sila, pero I, I, uh, it is my responsibility to tell you that they were reappointed again. But uh, we are uh, uh, probably short of uh, um, conversation about that. Pero naritain po silang lahat. Alam na ninyo yun, but today is the first Sunday. So, andito po si Pastor Jericho. Siya na po ang uh, pastor ng contemporary service at 3 o'clock. Yan, yan po. And then, ang na-assign sa Ilocano ay walang iba kundi si... Pastor Marcel pa rin. Opo. Ako lang po ang naidagdag, mga kapatid. Ako lang po ang naidagdag this time sa mga manggagawa. Ang mga dating na dito, sila po ay na-transfer out to another local church. At ang Jaconis sa mga kapatid ay na-retain po sila. Ay si kapatid na Irene Bioya at si kapatid na Sharon Rose Yabut. So, I welcome din po ninyo sila, mga kapatid, because today is the first Sunday of the conference year. So, I'm so happy to be uh, uh, working with them within this conference year. I hope sila din po ay masaya na makakasama ako. Sana masaya sila. <laughs> Alright, so mga kapatid, yan po ang idinagdag ko doon sa 
uh, ating uh, bulletin, mga kanina, mga kapatid, hindi ko po na isama ito. Alright, so let's bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, we continue to lift up our soul unto you. Feed us with your word. Enable our spirit, Lord, to yearn into your very will. And we ask your Holy Spirit to come upon us in the name of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom and understanding as we listen to your very word. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say, Amen and Amen. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, those who belong to the body of Christ, I want you to look at this particular, um, I would say, lectionary lesson today. I seldomly preach in lectionary, but I decided to uh, deliver a lectionary lesson today because I would like to honor a great man who impacted a lot of people in the United Methodist Church and other churches. And I'm speaking to the lectionary lesson guru, no other than Bishop Daniel Arichia. And I made a promise last night that I will continue the tradition of lectionary lesson clinic, which I'm going to handle beginning July in Northwest Metro Manila District. I don't know how uh, wide and how, uh, um, how long it will be, uh, but uh, it is my commitment as I honor our beloved Bishop, Bishop Daniel Arichia Jr. Now, our lectionary lesson can be found in four important books in the Bible. One in the Old Testament from 1 Samuel chapter 8, 4 to 20. Now, I want you to get your Bible and open that on that particular uh, text. And then um, it's followed by a passage in Psalm 138. And in the New Testament, we have the Second Corinthians, which is the epistle, chapter 4, 13 to 5 to verse 1. And then in the gospel, which I have read to you, Mark chapter 3, 20 to 35. Now, I want to go back to these four particular books because we cannot understand the lectionary lesson unless and until we would be able to understand the entirety of these four books or four passages and stories that we have today. I'll begin with 1 Samuel. For us, you know, to understand the very scenario, the very uh, foundation of what we're going to discuss today. Here in 1 Samuel, Samuel, by, uh, Samuel was asked by the, the elders of uh, Israel. They are clamoring for a king. Sabi po nila, Samuel, kailangan na namin ng hari na mag mangunguna sa amin. And so Samuel prayed and he talked to the Lord. And the Lord replied to him. And he said, you know, Samuel, if someone will be the king, here are the things that he must learn to implement. At kung babasahin niyo mga kapatid, so I'm going to... Uh, to go back again, you have the Bible with you. E napakarami pong mga requirements doon ng isang hari na kailangan pong matupad. And the people would not, you know, stop clamoring and asking and demanding Samuel to do something. They are not after those responsibilities. They are not after those um, uh, rules and regulations. Uh, Israel, or Israelites or the elders of Israel would want and they would like to have a king right away. Kaya po, sabi ng Panginoon kay Samuel, you have to listen to them. You have to heed to what they want. And then Samuel made a prayer again, mga kapatid. At 
Ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Samuel, Samuel, you talk to them on my behalf. I want you to speak. I want you to tell them. I want you to, to guide them. I want you to say something to them on my behalf. So yun po yung unang Samuel, mga kapatid. Yung sa Salmo, sa 138, it talks about the words of God. It talks about uh, uh, something about the goodness of the Lord, about praises. It talks about the sing or singing the ways of the Lord. But again, it boils down to one important thing. That in Psalm 138, ang binabanggit po doon, mga kapatid, ay tungkol sa pagsasalita ng mga salita ng Diyos. You have to speak the very Word of God. The, the words of God are very important here in 138. You have to talk about the very Word of God. You have to speak out the very Word of God. You know, I will, if I may read that particular passage in verse 4. When all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, underscoring, when they hear. What is the premise of hearing, mga kapatid? Nakikinig ka because somebody is what? Talking. Amen. You hear, you listen because somebody is talking. Somebody is is. Speaking. Now, in this particular passage, I want you to understand that it is the very Word of God being told. Ngayon, dito kay 2 Corinthians, kay Paul, his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, 13 to 5, verse, or chapter 5 to 1. And sabi po niya, mga kapatid, because of faith, they believe and therefore they speak. Dahil sila po ay naniniwala, dahil sila po ay uh, naroon sa ganung kalagayan ang sabi po ng 2 Corinthians, they speak, therefore they speak. So if you believe and if you have something in your life that you want to believe in, then you have to speak out. Then you have to tell what you believe in. And in Mark chapter 3, 20 to 35, which is the gospel of our lectionary lesson today, Jesus spoke of himself. Jesus spoke of who are his brothers, sisters, and mother. Ang istorya dito, sabi po ng mga naroon, eh, itong taon na ito ay sa demonyo. Pero ano sabi po ni Jesus? In fact, si Jesus at ang kanyang mga alagad, kakain na lang eh. Tingnan ninyo ha, kakain na lang. Pero ano po nangyari? Sila po ay dinaluhong ng maraming tao doon, asking questions. But then Jesus would allow them to come. Sige lang, papuntahin ninyo. The very reason why Jesus asked them to come, so that Jesus would be able to tell, underscoring that particular um, word, to tell something to them. And indeed, doon po sa mga succeeding verses, mapansin ninyo, Jesus told them a parable. Now, if we will try to look at these four passages and texts, brothers and sisters in Christ, you will be amazed that this lectionary lesson is focusing on one a specific message. God calls us to speak. Ang central focus ng lectionary lesson ngayon ay tungkol sa pagsasalita. God is calling us to speak. Samuel was instructed to speak. Psalm is about speaking so that people can hear the very word of God. In Corinthians, because you have faith, therefore you speak. And in Mark, 
Jesus spoke of himself. He spoke of the very will of his Father who is in heaven. And what does it mean if we have that as our lectionary focus? God is calling each one of us, you and me, to speak out. There is a need and there is a call for God's people to speak out. At sabi ko nga, Lord, ang ganda naman ng pasimula ng linggo o ng conference year. Why? Because we are being directed by God what to do. We are being directed God, by God how to do it. And God is telling each one of us to speak out. If you have failed to tell something, if you have failed to proclaim, if you have failed to speak on behalf of God, then this is the time, probably this whole conference here, that each one of us would begin to speak. This is not the time to be silent. The kingdom of God requires a lot of talking today. In this time of pandemic, I do believe why God is allowing us to use this online platform. Why God is permitting us to improve our connectivity and be able to spread the gospel in all parts of the world. You know why? I do believe that is God's way for us to speak. It is God's way for us to proclaim. It is God's way for us to, to say something to a lot of people out there. We need to be bold in proclaiming. We need to be bold in telling the reign of God and His coming reigning through the second coming of Jesus Christ. There is a need for us to make a lot of talking today. Mga kapatid, yan po ang mensahe ng Diyos sa atin. Kailangan pong magsalita na tayo mga minamahal. Kung hindi pa ho kayo nakakapagsalita, mga kapatid, I want you to begin talking now. Kung hindi pa ho nyo nasusubukan, mga kapatid, na magsalita at magsabi, you have to begin Today, there is so much challenge or challenges along the way. But there is a need for you to begin talking. There is a need for you to begin telling and sharing something. At yun po ang direksyon ng mensahe ng Panginoon to this lectionary lesson. Now, the first question. What to speak about? Sasabihin nyo, Pastor, Ano po ba ang sasabihin namin? Pastor, ano po ba ang aming ipangangalat? Ano ang aming sasabihin? Brothers and sisters in Christ, there is a need for us to realize this direction of God. It's about time for us to get out from our comfort zones. That seemingly, we felt that talking, preaching, proclaiming belongs to the pastors and the deaconesses. We thought that this kind of, of ministry is only for those who studied at the seminary. No, I would like to change your understanding. It is not true that it belongs only to the pastors and deaconesses and those who studied in the seminary. Anyone who is part of the body of Christ, you have to talk. You have to say something. Now, the first thing that you have to understand here is what to speak about. Ano po ang kailangan sasabihin niyo? Mahirap naman kung salita ka ng salita, wala ka namang katuturan ang sinasabit, sinasalita mo. Look at this. In Samuel, in 1 Samuel, listen to this church. In verse 10, Samuel told the words of the Lord. Kung inyo pong papansinin, mga kapatid, if you have the Bible with you, Ano po ang sabi doon, mga kapatid, sa verse 10? Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking, asking him for a king. 
Ano po ang ginawa ni Samuel, mga kapatid? Ang ginawa po ni Samuel ay kanya pong sinabi ang salita ng Diyos. Kung anong sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, yun ang kanyang sinabi sa mga tao. So, on the basis of that particular passage, church, Samuel proclaimed the words of God. He informed the people of the instruction that he received from the Lord. Kaya po mga kapatid, ano po ang kailangan nating sabihin? That on the basis of Samuel, mga kapatid, kailangan sabihin nating yung what? Salita ng Diyos. That's what we should talk about. Eh, ang kadalasang pinag-uusapan natin Facebook, ang kadalasang pinag-uusapan natin Messenger, ang pinag-uusapan natin kung ano-ano mga kapatid. But let me ask you, were you able to talk about the very Word of God? Were you able to spread the Word of God? Were you able to, to share the Word of God? And what's the message of, of this? Lectionary lesson to each one of us on the basis of Samuel, be lovers of the Scripture. Mga kapatid, ulitin ko yon. be lovers of the Scripture. Kayo mga kapatid na nahan dyan, may hawak ho ba kayong Biblia ngayon? O kayo lang po ay nakatitig sa amin at nakat- nakatingin, hindi bali trabaho ni pastor yan. Hindi mga kapatid, the Bible is for everyone. Amen. It's Sunday today, you're supposed to have your Bible with you. Do you love your scripture? Do you love your Bible? And this is what we should talk about. We should speak about the Word of God. Be a Bible reader. Be a Bible proclaimer. And I will tell you, sometimes we have lost our touch when it comes to the very Word of God. So I think God is telling us something today. That in order for the church to grow, for, in order for the church and each one of you to grow spiritually, to grow to another level of your faith, is that you have to begin speaking of the very Word of God. Now in Psalm, in verse 4, which I mentioned just a while ago, it says here, May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord. When we hear the words of your mouth, may they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Ano po ang nangyari? Ano po ang pinag-usapan? Ano po ang sinasabi o being, being, uh, uh, being proclaimed here? Dahilan po sa kanilang pagsasalita ng salita ng Diyos, it resulted to praising. You see? Sabi pala dito sa Salmo 138, ano ho? Para pala tayo mga kapatid makapagpuri sa Diyos. No? When, when we are being drawn to praise God, when we are being drawn to sing the ways of the Lord, there is a need for us really to look at the very Word of God. It is because of the Word of God that we can praise the Lord. It is because of the Word of God that we can sing for the Lord. We cannot sing because we want to sing. We cannot sing for the sake of singing. We sing because we have the very Word of God. And we have to tell the people about the Word of God. And let's speak about the Word of God so that we would be able to allow each one of us to sing praises to God. So our home will be filled with praises. Our home will be filled with singing. Our home will be filled with God's awesome words. And it will make our home meaningful, successful, and productive. You tell the, you tell the people about the goodness and faithfulness. You talk about the blessing and it will lead to what? It will lead to praises. 
Kaya mga kapatid, magsalita po tayo na magsalita tungkol sa Panginoon. At yung mga sinasalita natin ay tungkol sa kanyang mga salita para ang mga tao, ang tang bawat isa ay magkaroon ng mga praises. Magkaroon po mga kapatid ng sing, singing of the ways of the Lord. Ikalawa o ipangatlo dito kay Corinto, kay Pablo. Ano po ang nangyari doon? Ano ang kanilang pinag-uusapan? Ano ang kanilang uh, pinapahayag? Let me guide you to that in verse 13 and 14. Let me read that one. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. You see? I believe, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in His presence. Ano po ang kailangang pag-usapan at anong kailangang sabihin dito sa Korinto? Ang sabi po dito, let's talk about Jesus. Let's speak about Jesus. Let's speak about the eternal glory. Let's speak about perseverance. Particularly in verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So if you want to speak, if you want to tell something to a lot of people, you tell something about Jesus. You have to speak about the eternal glory. You have to talk about perseverance that we can be with God no matter how hard our situation is. In Mark, what is to speak about? Dito po, kino-question si Jesus eh. Sabi niya, ito sa demonyo to eh. Pero ano sabi ng Panginoon? Meron bang sa demonyo na ang demonyo e eh, kakalabanin niya yung sariling demonyo? That cannot be. Ano pong sabi dito? Si Jesus ay nagsasabi, hindi ako yan. I'm going to introduce myself to you. At dito inintroduce ni Jesus kung sino siya, mga kapatid. He introduced himself. He spoke about himself, who he is. Kaya nga yung kanyang mga kapatid at yung kanyang magulang, eh sila po ay nagtakbuhan doon. Ano? At nung nandun siya sa bahay, sabi ng marami, Rabay, nandyan yung mga kapatid mo, nandyan yung nanay mo. You see, the mere fact that Jesus' brothers and mother were there is an admission to the very fact that Jesus is actually introducing who He is. He's talking about Himself. Ako ito, ako si Jesus, na anak ng Diyos. Now, what is that to us? What to speak about? According to Mark, let's talk about who we are in Christ. Let's share to a lot of people who is Christ in our lives. You tell the people there how, how people would know you. How the people would, would be able to see you in the sense that you are with Christ. Kayo ho ba mga kapatid, eh, are you telling the people who you are? Are you telling the people that Christ is in you? Are you telling the people that Christ is living in you? Are you telling the, the people that in your home there is Christ? You speak and tell them that you are indeed children of God. In Mark, ano pong binanggit dito? They have to talk about the will of God. 
Sabi ni Jesus, itong kalooban ng, ng ating Diyos, ang kalooban ng Diyos kung gusto ninyo na kayo ay maging anak o maging kapatid, kung kayo ay maging nanay, kailangan gawin ninyo ang kalooban ng Diyos. And what is the will of God that being, uh, being shared here by Jesus? The will of God is for Him to be known. That's the will of God. And I would like to tell this to everyone. The will of God is for Him to be proclaimed. The will of God is for us to be in His words. The will of God is for us to tell other people of His love. The will of God is for us to tell how God can change the life of a person. The will of God is for us to please Him every day. The will of God is for us to exalt His name. That's the very will of God. The very will of God is for us to speak out. The very will of God is for us to tell who God is in our lives. Now, pagkatapos nating malaman mga kapatid, ano ang dapat na ipangangalandakan natin? Ano ang dapat nating sasabihin, mga minamahal? Hindi kung ano-ano ang sasabihin, kundi itong kailangan sabihin. Now, as a church, that's how we should operate. That's how our faith should go on. There are requisites of a speaker. Eh, hindi hulhat, pwede magsalita. Pero kung meron kayo nito, magsalita na po kayo na magsalita. I'll begin. The requisite in speaking and the qualities of a speaker God needed today is this. Number one, He has the spirit of faith. Sabi sa Korinto, ano yun? Because you have the spirit of faith, therefore I speak. Anong kailangan kapatid? It is the spirit of faith. A person who would like to speak must have that kind of quality. The quality to have the spirit of faith. Number two, he must, be, he must have credibility. Dito kay Mark, mga kapatid, ano po mapansin nyo? Kay Marcos, ipinakita ng Panginoon sino siya. I am credible enough to tell you because I am the Son of God. If you're truly a Christian church, you must possess a credibility that you are indeed a child of God. Number three, quality is a constant communing with God. Look at Samuel. Every time that he will talk to the elders of Israel, he will pause for a while. He will go to the Father. He will kneel down. He will pray. He will ask. Why? Because there is a relationship between him and his God. He is not doing anything out of his own. Samuel would always pray. Samuel would, would always commune with God because there is a relationship between him and God. And that's the quality that we have to fulfill. The quality of being with God constantly. The quality of being with him in that kind of relationship. Now, it's, it's not... A requisite for us that if you want to say something, we just simply go on. There is a need for us to have a constant communing with God. And last requ- requisite and last quality, wholehearted. We should have a wholeheartedness. Anong sabi dito sa Psalm? Ano po? Verse 1. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. You know, that's an important quality. If you want to speak out, you must have that heart. What kind of heart? Not half of your heart. The Bible says in Psalm, with all my heart. So when you speak, do not speak. Half bake speaking. When you speak, you speak with all your heart. When you tell something, it should be with all your heart because that's the true you. That is the real you. As I end, may this lectionary lesson of speaking and the call for us to speak out may lead us towards the direction where God wants us to be. As a church, as a members of this church, as leaders of this church.
May the Lord bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. For our uh, offering, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Para po sa ating mga... Uh, pagkakaloob, nariyan po sa ating uh, screen ang ating video uh, account or GCAS account para po sa ating mga pagpapadala ng ating mga offerings, tithes and offerings. Thank you, O Lord, for the blessing of uh, opportunities for providing us material goods, for providing us livelihood and source of our living. And in doing so, Lord, and in return, we give back a portion of what we have earned to honor you and to give you thanks. And bless those hands that have given their tithes and their, their pledges, their donations and thanksgiving. May you bless them with more. And we offer it. And we ask that you will bless it for the advancement of thy work through this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Mga kapatid, gagawin po natin ang pagdiriwang ng huling hapunan ng Panginoon at ng Passover. Alam niyo po, sa pandemya ngayon ay napakahirap ng sitwasyon natin as a church because much we would like to have our communion, the regular one. Eh, hindi po natin magagawa. Mga kapatid, there are a lot of requirements to be uh, supplied and needed for the conduct of the regular communion. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to have our uh, Passover celebration and uh, uh, celebration of the Last Supper of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya ka po kayo nasa bahay. If you have your meal there, you have your um, bread, um, you just simply prepare that and we were about to uh, begin our administration of, of this. Kayo na tunay na at tapat na nagsisisi sa inyong mga kasalanan at uh, nasa pag-ibig at pagmamahal sa inyong mga kapwa at nagnasa sa pagbabagong buhay, maalinsunod sa mga kautusan ng Diyos at lumalakad mula ngayon sa kanyang mga banal na landas. Magsidulog nga kayo rito na may pananampalataya at tanggapin ninyo itong banal na sakramento sa kaaliwan ninyo. At sa paninikluhod ay gawin ang may pagpapakumbabang, pangungumpisal sa makapangyarihan Diyos. Manalangin tayo, makapangyarihan Diyos, Ama ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo, lumalang ng lahat ng bagay, hukom ng lahat ng tao. Aming tinatanggap at itinatangis ang badlang kasalanan at mga kasamaan na sa lahat ng panahon ay aming nagawa. 
sa pag-iisip, sa salita at gawa laban sa dakila mong kadiyosan. Kami tunay na nagsisisi at buong puso nagdaramdam dahil sa aming mga pagsalangsang. Ang pag-alaala sa mga ito ay nagpapadalamhati sa amin, maawa ka sa amin. Maawa ka sa amin, lubhang mahabaging ama, alang-alang sa iyong anak na si Yesu Kristo na aming Panginoon. Amen at Amen. Na noong gabing siya ay pinagkanulo ay dumampot siya ng tinapay. At nang makapagpasalamat ay kanyang ibinahagi sa kanyang mga lagad at kanyang sinabi, kumuha at kumain kayo, ito ang aking katawan na ibinibigay para sa inyo. Gawin niyo ito sa pag-aalaala sa akin. Kayo pong mga nasa tahanan ngayon, mga kapatid, Inyo pong hawakan ng tinapay na nasa sa inyo. Inyo pong itaas at alalahanin na ito'y simbolo ng katawan ni Kristo na ibinibigay sa atin. Pagkatapos ng hapunan ay kinuha niya ang saro at na makapagpasalamat ay kanyang ibinigay sa mga algad at kanyang sinabi, kumuha at uminom kayo. Itong dugo ng bagong tipan na nabubu para sa inyo sa kapagpapatawad ng inyong mga kasananan. Gawin niyo ito sa ting iinom kayo sa pag-aalala sa akin. Mga kapatid na sa tahanan, hawakan ninyo ang inyong inumin, inyo pong itaas. At sa diwang ito, inyong alalahanin na ito'y simbolo ng dugo ni Kristo na nabubu para sa inyo at sa marami sa kapagpapatawad ng kasalanan. Inyo pong itaas na pareho mga kapatid ang tinapay at ang inyong iinumin at ako'y mananalangin. Panginoon, Ikaw ang magbendisyon sa mga hawak na tinapay at ng inumin ng aking mga kapatid na sa tahanan man o na saan man sila. Bendisyonan mo ito Bigyan mo ng kapangyarihan na sa pag-aalaala lang ito sa pagtanggap nila at pagkain. Maranasan nila ang iyong pag-ibig. Maranasan nila ang iyong pagkilos. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, tinatalaga namin ito. Sa pangalan ng Ama, ng Anak, at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen at Amen. Ang dulang ng Panginoon ay bukas. Mga kapatid, sa inyong tahanan, ibinukas ito ng Panginoon para sa inyo. Ang gagawin po natin, ibabahagi sa bawat pamilya na nasa inyong tahanan, kung nasaan man sila, mga kapatid. Pwede na po kayong pumunit o pumutol ng tinapay. Hawakan lang po ninyo, hintayin po ninyo si Pastor Mendre na magsasabi, wala pong unahan sa pagsubo, ano po, uh, sabay-sabay tayo, mga kapatid. So, ito po ay uh, tinapay na ipamimigay. Nakasupot po ito, kaya ito ay safe na safe. Ano po? Uh, Lapit na ninyo. Dito po sa loob ng sanctuary ay ipamamahagi. Pero sabay-sabay tayo mga kapatid, hintayin po niyo si Pastor Bendry na magsabi po sa inyo what will you do. Lahat po ng miyembro ng pamilya ay uh, hamawak po kayo. Maybe next uh, communion natin, direct uh, Francis, nakasum. Sa susunod, nakasum. I want them to be seen on the screen so that we can have communication, mga kapatid. So, ready na po niya next month. Nakasum po kayo. We want us to be seen together. At habang hinahawakan niyo mga kapatid, kayo na sa bahay ngayon, I want you to reflect. I want you to think about Jesus. I want you to think about the love of God. And I want you to think about yourself. We want strength from God. And the Holy Communion will enable us to become strong in faith. Amen. 
Yes, God is good today. Kapatid, hawakan po ninyo ang tinapay na sa inyong bahay. Kung anong tinapay man yan, mga kapatid, it is just a symbol of the body of Christ. Ang sabi po ng Panginoon sa Kristo, ito ang aking katawan na ibinibigay sa inyo. Kumain kayo sa pag-aalala sa akin. Mga kapatid ko, kumuha kayo ng tinapay at tayo po ay kumain. Iyo pong hawakan ang inyong inumin sa bahay, mga kapatid. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, Iso Kristo, ito ang aking dugo na ibinubo para sa inyo sa ikapagpapatawad ng inyong kasalanan. Inumin niyo ito sa pag-aalaala sa akin. Mga kapatid, sabay-sabay po tayong mag-alala sa pagitan ng pag-inom ng ating inumin ngayon. Pwede po bang ilagay ninyo ang inyong mga kamay sa tapat ng inyong dibdib? At tayo po'y mananalangin ng panalangin ng pagpapakumbaba. Hindi namin ipinalalagay sa pagdulog dito sa iyong dulang o mahabaging Panginoon na nagtitiwala sa aming sariling katwiran, kundi sa iyong dimabilang at mga dakilang kaawaan hindi nga kami karapat dapat na mamulit man lamang ng mga mumo sa ilalim ng dulang. Ngunit ikaw din ang Panginoon ang kawaan ay hindi nagkukulang. Kaya nga ipagkaloob mo sa amin, mapagbiyayang Panginoon, sa pakikibahaging ito sa mga pag-aalaala sa iyong anak at magpatuloy sa paglago sa kanyang wangis at kami manahan sa kanya at siya naman sa amin magpakailanman. Salamat po. Lahat ay magsabi, Salamat, Panginoon. Amen. At Amen. For our closing hymn, let us sing, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need a tender care. In thy presence, pastures be.
kapatid, kayo pong nasa bahay ngayon, you may even kneel down wherever you are, if you are in your couch or elsewhere, if you want to come into the presence of God and be able to express your heart before Him, you can kneel down. And let us pray together and let's continue to believe that God is going to listen to all our prayers. Let's bow our heads and pray. Almost gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be together today in this very first Sunday of this month and even the first Sunday of this conference year. We thank you, O God, for the opportunity that you have given to all the members of the church who are watching now and who are joining us in this virtual and online live broadcast. We even thank you, O God, for the presence of our loved ones, for the presence of our friends all over the world, our friends and members of this church here in the Philippines. And we thank you, O God, for those who are here. We thank you, O Lord, for allowing us to see you, to experience you, and to have a new dimension of understanding about you, O Lord. We even thank you, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit who guided us today. We thank you, O God, for all the provisions that you have given. We thank you for all the protections and all the things that you have done, Lord, to keep us away from COVID-19. And thank you, O Lord, for the healing that you have given to those who were tested positive and now they are negative of the virus. We thank you, O God, for the donations, for the offerings, and for the contributions of the members and non-members to the church so that the programs and even the ministries will go on. We even thank you, O God, for those who are praying for one another. We thank you, O God, for all the programs that we have, exercising, O Lord, our faith and telling a lot of people all over the world how God is so gracious and loving. And today, we would like to experience the same. We would like, Father God, that our God who is powerful, who is the creator and the finisher of life, would be able to strengthen our faith and be able, Lord, to become strong in the midst of pandemic. And it is my prayer, Lord, that each one of us will be under the care of our God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, I'm praying for those who are experiencing so much burden in life those are being pressured because of economic situation and because of economic needs i pray father god those who are trying to to meet both ends and trying father god to have a better life ahead despite the pandemic lord i pray for all the members of the church who are trying to grow up for a better life despite having scarcity of resources. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to them, that they will never lose heart, and that they will continue to believe in the very Word of God as the Word of God will speak to them and as they speak also about the Word of God. Oh, Lord, I pray for those who are sick down and trodden. I pray, Lord, that you will heal them. I pray, Father God, that you will give them the power to persevere. I believe, Lord, that you have something great for them. If they will continue to have faith, if they will continue, Lord, to have, have that believing and that they will continue, Lord, to keep, you know, to put their trust in you. Oh, Lord, I pray that today those who are praying for themselves and praying for loved ones, praying for someone else, praying for their business, praying for their work in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, that you will be with them, that you will extend your hand upon them, and that you will show them that you are God who is in control of everything. I lift them up, Lord, to you. I may not be able to mention their names, especially those who are celebrating their birthday this week. Lord, I'm lifting them up to you. 
that you will bless their lives that you will continue lord to give them the enormous provisions and even give them strength so that they would be able lord to complete this life according to your purpose and design I even pray for those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. Lord, continue to bind them together as husband and wife and continue to, Lord, to show compassion to each other and be able, Lord, to strengthen the bond of their love for each other. Bless their homes as well. Lord, we pray for the programs and activities of Knox United Methodist Church. We ask for your consecration upon those who will give their time and their effort, Lord, in serving you to various ministries and praying, Father God, for the leadership of this church. Praying, Lord, that this week we will claim that victory shall come. That this week, Lord, we will continue to believe that we will be protected from the virus, from the harm and from the danger of this virus. We will claim, Lord, this week that you will be there for us, that your angels will be with us in all our un undertakings. Lord, we commit everything unto you, even as we pray, Lord, that each one right now will be blessed by you. Thank you so much for this service. Thank you for showing your mercy and your grace upon us. We commit everything unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the fellowship of, of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.